You immediately recognize the song when you hear its opening guitar riff. Come As You Are would be the final top 40 hit for Nirvana's career, and the lyrics would take on a whole new meaning following the death of frontman Kurt Cobain. But the song's reputation was also tarnished over accusations of plagiarism. But the story runs much deeper than that, and that's what we're going to explore in today's video. Ahead of Nirvana entering the studio in early 1991 to record Nevermind, they would send producer Butch Vig a demo tape featuring a handful of songs, including Come As You Are. The song was recorded pretty quickly, with Cobain's guitar solo being completed in just two takes, while the vocals were done in three takes. Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl would look back at how frontman Kurt Cobain approached songwriting for the band, telling VH1, We wanted them to almost be like children's songs. We would tell people they were intended to be as simple as possible. Kurt's focus was the melody. He used to say the music comes first and the lyrics come second. Ahead of Nevermind's release, the label and their management assumed that the first single, Smells Like Teen Spirit, would be in a quote, a bass building alternative cut, while the second single was planned to be Come As You Are, which they assumed would cross over to other radio formats. However, when Smells Like Teen Spirit became a massive hit, the album's second single served a different purpose, simply being used to maintain the band's popularity. But for frontman Kurt Cobain, he had second thoughts about releasing Come As You Are as the band's second single. Nirvana manager Danny Goldberg would recall in the 2000 book Eyewitness Nirvana, The Day to Day Chronicle. We met to discuss what Nevermind's second single would be. We couldn't decide between Come As You Are and In Bloom. Kurt was nervous about Come As You Are because it was too similar to a Killing Joke song, 80s. But we all thought it was still the better song to go with, and he was right. Killing Joke later did complain about it, he'd say. Nirvana's 1991 track, Come As You Are, sounded like a slowed down version of the Killing Joke 1985 track, 80s. Killing Joke's guitarist Jordy Walker still harbored some resentment years later, telling Guitarist Magazine that the group were, and I quote, very pissed off about that, saying, It's obvious to everyone. Our publisher sent the publisher a letter saying it was, and they went, Boo, never heard of you. But the historical thing about Nirvana saying they'd never heard of us was that they'd already sent us a Christmas card, he'd say. But Killing Joke opted not to file a lawsuit at the time, citing personal and financial reasons. It likely would have been an expensive endeavor, and it wouldn't have been an easy case, because the Killing Joke track 80s bore some resemblance to the Dams 1982 track Life Goes On. The members of Killing Joke would deny being familiar with the Dams 1982 track, but the story doesn't end there. Two other songs by lesser known bands make use of a similar sounding riff. A band called Garden of Delight had a song called 22 Faces that was released in October of 1984, six months after Killing Joke released 80s as a single. But there's more to the story. We have to go all the way back to 1966 and listen to the equal song Baby Come Back. According to music journalist Alex Smith, Killing Joke openly admitted to knowing about the riff from the Equals and being influenced by it for their song 80s. The beef between Nirvana's surviving members and Killing Joke was water under the bridge as Killing Joke frontman Jazz Coleman sang their song Requiem with Foo Fighters at a handful of gigs in the years that followed. In 2003, Dave Grohl would perform drums for Killing Joke's new album at the time, The Death and Resurrection Show, and Killing Joke bassist Paul Raven would tell Rolling Stone of the whole controversy over the song Come As You Are in 80s, revealing, Yeah, Dave and I had a few laughs about that over the past year or so. He mentioned it to me when I met him backstage at Pantera a couple of years back. Come As You Are would be released as the second single from Nevermind in March of 1992, and peaked at number 32 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. It remained on the Hot 100 charts for four and a half months, while also peaking at number three on the Billboard Mainstream and Modern Rock Tracks chart. A music video would be shot for the single. Previously, Cobain had a horrible experience filming the music video for Smells Like Teen Spirit after fighting with director Samuel Bayer. For the group's second video, Cobain wanted to go with a different director, working with Kevin Kerslake, who would go on to direct the band's videos for Lithium, In Bloom, and Sliver. When it came time to shoot the video, Cobain was in awful shape. 
The band was about to head to Australia on their tour and Cobain was going through withdrawals. As he was going through withdrawals, the video didn't show too many shots of Cobain's face. With drummer Dave Grohl remembering, he looked bad, gray, he just looked sad because he wasn't using. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Do you see a similarity between the songs or not? And we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Story Sticker.